I have a friend who we can call, I don't know, Brad, okay? Now, I love Brad, and me and Brad have a ton of things in common, and we have a lot of similar interests. The only thing about Brad that I can't stand is that Brad is a compulsive liar. Now, maybe we all know someone like this, but Brad will consistently invent these elaborate stories about things that he claims happened to him that are so obviously false, it's impossible for me to listen to him with a straight face. This is obvious to everyone, except for Brad. Now, though sometimes the stories are so fake and elaborate that it's hard not to find them entertaining, it also genuinely makes me sad for him. And it makes me sad for him because I can tell the reason he's making up these stories is because he thinks that if he does, people will just accept and love him. So for whatever reason, deep down, he doesn't truly believe that it's possible that people will love him and accept him for who he truly is, but will only find him worthy of love and acceptance if he's perceived as special and successful. Now at the same time, I've got a pretty big mouth and I really appreciate when people are straight up and honest, as long as they aren't using that honesty as an excuse to hurt others or to elevate themselves by putting other people down. But if they speak out of genuine concern for the well-being of others, I can appreciate that and my friends know that about me. So I couldn't help myself when I try to tell him several times that when he tells me these stories, I just don't believe him and that he doesn't need to lie to me. But still, he just sticks to his guns and he tells me that he isn't lying, which is another obvious lie. Now, the worst part about it is outside of that, Brad is actually a really good friend. He's loyal, reliable, helpful, and easygoing. But unfortunately, he thinks that lying will make me like him more. But in reality, it just makes me like him less because I can't connect with people that seem inauthentic. Authenticity is the main thing that I need in my relationships. The irony is the thing that he believes is the cure to getting what he wants is actually the disease that prevents him from actually getting what he wants. That's the interesting thing about humans is that we all do this in different ways. So it's kind of like when people are so focused on making a good impression that most of the time they end up making a bad one. I've even noticed this in myself as well. In the past, when I felt the most insecure and desperate for love, those were the times when I got so defensive that I acted in ways which actually made it way harder for people to actually love and accept me. I was actually pushing away their love and acceptance when deep down, love and acceptance was the thing that I really wanted. So what is it that we all want deep, deep down? Well, I think if we spend enough time thinking about it, most of us will realize that what we want is genuine and unconditional love and unconditional acceptance. We want to be valued and loved for who we are. But in order for it to be real, it has to be unconditional love and acceptance of who you truly are deep down, your truest and most authentic self. See, now the problem is in order for others to accept your truest and most authentic self, they have to see it. But in order for them to see it, it requires you to be vulnerable in the most significant way. All of your bad parts and insecurities continuously exposed, which makes us exceptionally vulnerable to being hurt and rejected. And giving people access to that kind of vulnerability where they can reject the truest you is what makes showing people a truest self so scary. No one wants to be rejected for who they truly are deep down. Think about all the things that you tell yourself. If they really knew this about me, then they wouldn't want anything to do with me. Now, those are the things that when we think about them, they remind us that we truly aren't unconditionally loved and accepted by others. So how do we cope with this? Well, to protect ourselves from the potential hurt, like Brad, we all create these different ways of trying to protect ourselves and maintain a feeling of being capable of love and acceptance. We unconsciously create so many defense mechanisms to protect our truest selves from getting hurt, but the bad news is, it works. When it works, it ends up reinforcing our often unconscious belief that we can't allow ourselves to become too vulnerable. And this stops us from being able to be our authentic and truest selves at all times, or even to accept our truest and authentic selves. But the worst part about all of it is, we're probably right about some of that. As long as people are selfish, we can never count on people not to hurt us. But selfishness is also part of our spiritual DNA. So with that being said, I actually found that Christianity really does have something significant to say about all of this. And I didn't understand this until I went through it myself. So a couple years ago, I started reading the Bible again and started thinking harder about the foundational truths of Christianity. And that really changed everything. But probably not in the way that you're thinking. So it all started when I started trying to figure out what the Bible had to say about love, marriage, and the gospel. Now, I'll have to elaborate and tell the full story later, but in short, I realized that loving someone is serving them. And to love someone, not only do you have to be vulnerable, but it's going to cost you something. So true love comes with a self-sacrificial price that you pay for the other person. So now in the Christian worldview, I thought about what it meant when the Bible says that God is not just the source of love, but God is love. He loves everyone unconditionally. One way that he showed his love is by giving. First, he gave us life. He created us knowing that it would hurt him beyond comprehension if just one of us rejected him. But still, he gave us life and unconditionally loves every single person that he created. 
Now, I don't care what you've done. You're not an exception. God always knew your truest and most authentic self. He knew your absolute worst parts that others might not accept and even parts that you can't even accept yourself. But none of that changes God's love for you because there's nothing that you can do to make God love you any more or any less than he does right now. I also came to think deeper about what it cost God to offer us a relationship with him. I thought about how in Christianity, God didn't just sit there in heaven and simply tell us that he loved us. No, he loved us so much that he put on human flesh and came into the world, made himself lower than the angels, vulnerable and weak enough to allow us to betray him, capture him, beat him, and eventually torture him to death. He did this so that way he could pay the price for our wrongdoings. And instead of making us pay for it, he offers his payment to us as a free gift. It costs him everything to have a relationship with you. The relationship with him isn't forced on you, but it's offered to you as a free gift. Again, a free gift. That's the game changer right there. Think about it. If someone offers you a free gift, that means that you don't have to pay for it. The person who's given you the gift is the one that pays for it, nor do you have to work for it. If you had to pay for it or work for it, then it obviously wouldn't be a gift. It would be something that you earned. But when someone offers you a gift, it's already paid for. All you have to do is accept it. Since Christ is the one who paid for it, it's not based on anything that you did, but based entirely on what Christ did. Once we realize that, we realize that his gift of acceptance didn't depend on your performance or how good you were. So we no longer have to unconsciously hide parts of our truest selves from ourselves because we know that acknowledging them doesn't change God's love or acceptance for us. So we can look at them without any fear or defenses because we know that our status with God isn't threatened by those things. Only then do we have the freedom to start looking at the most awful parts in ourselves that we couldn't accept or acknowledge before. And we can do so without feeling threatened, defensive, or making exceptions or excuses to ourselves. It was at this time that I realized that if we think that we have to be exceptionally good or likable in order for God to accept us, we're naturally going to have to deny a significant part of our truest authentic selves, namely the bad parts, in order to believe that we're worthy of unconditional love and acceptance. So ultimately, that doesn't solve the problem that we started with. But when we realize that we're saved only because we accepted a gift, we realize that we're not accepted because of our moral performance, but in spite of it. This allows for us to slowly gain the courage to become more and more of our authentic selves. If we know that we're perfectly safe because we're unconditionally loved and accepted by the greatest being in the entire universe, we no longer need to keep our defense mechanisms in order to protect ourselves. We have nothing to lose and nothing to fear. The final part of this is we can start to realize that the bad things that we do, we do because in some way we think that they'll bring us what we ultimately want. But when we think about it, we can remind ourselves that we already have everything that we ultimately want. Those things don't lead us to the unconditional love and acceptance that we desire, so we can start to let them go. We desire those things when we forget the fact that we're already unconditionally loved and accepted, which is easy to do. That's why those of us that are Christians should continue to remind ourselves daily that we don't need to hold on to them any longer, because whatever we thought we were getting from them, we already have in God's unconditional love and acceptance. So those are just some of my thoughts from my personal experience. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys got something out of it. And if you found it helpful, then make sure you share this video so that way others can also. And the next time that you catch yourself forgetting that you're unconditionally loved and accepted by Christ, what are you going to say? What do you mean?